we have all studied this uh, one dimensional consolidation process. A typical relationship is between void ratio and sigma prime. Do you remember this? Correct. We define this tip as something. What is this? Pre consolidation pressure. So, this is the pre consolidation pressure. Never do the mistake of delinking the chapters or the concepts which you have studied in geomechanics from your C323 to last chapter of this course because everything is interrelated. It is only 50 percent of the material we could understand in the first course and now rest of the 50 percent of the response we are trying to understand in this course. Now this is the major player and this controls everything. Sometime back I was talking about that the more circles may shift on the left hand side or they may lift may sh get shifted on the right hand side also. That means in short the pore pressures could be either positive or they could be negative, clear. So the material is same. Now if you look at this curve carefully, you will realize that on this curve if I consider two points 1 and 2, the stress is same, but what is changing? The mechanism, is this part okay? The stress is same, but what has changed? We started loading from here, we brought it up to this point and then we started unloading and this thing we defined as NC behavior normally consolidated and this is over consolidated. That means this type of soil is going to, or the soil response is going to exhibit maximum settlements because this has never been exposed to the pre consolidation pressure in its past. Having come up to this point clear, we are unloading the samples, sample has already got this thing in its memory, it has already undergone this much of the high pressure and now you are releasing the pressure from it. So it is behaving in a swelling manner, it is the swelling part, this is the compression part, clear. So the pore pressures here are going to be positive and what about these pore pressures? These are going to be negatives. So we have introduced another classification scheme for the soils today which is much more you know liked by engineers and technologists and that is based on their pore pressures. So ultimately what I want, I want to talk to you in such a manner that your pore pressure does not increase, your blood pressure, then only we will be frank, clear. At the same time, I do not want to make you so dull that you die out of, of uh, low blood pressure, both possibilities are there, is it not, low and high and this is just emotions, I may say something, you may collapse, I may say something, you become so furious that you may collapse, both sides are problematic. So now we have got a better way of controlling the material. We know that NC material is going to show positive pressures, positive pressures. Why? Too much water is present in them. These materials, by virtue of positive pore pressures, will always show C equal to zero, cohesion equal to zero. You remember the logic which I had gave, given you some time back. Take the sand particles, fill them in a bottle make system saturated and shake it, you see a lot of noise and that noise is because of the friction, clear. That means NC material is going to give you mostly the friction component. Life has become simple, tau equal to C plus sigma tan phi which I wanted to use there, I have eliminated one term very coolly. Got it? However, the OC materials are the tricky systems. Why? They do not sit silent. The moment you have loaded a system up to this point and you do unloading, the chances are the failures will occur because of the negative pore pressures 
and by virtue of this, these type of materials will show you C not equal to 0 and phi equal to 0. So, I have been using this term very, very wrongly, the materials, material is same. What has created the distinction between the response of the material is pre-construction pressure. You got this point? The material is same, the same soil sample which is exhibiting the positive pore water pressures and negative pore water pressures and hence what is going to happen? This gets reflected over here, either the more circles are going to move on the left hand side or on the right hand side depends upon the pore water pressure. And that is the reason we wanted to measure the pore water pressures here. It becomes like the sample is in ICU and we are doing the best possible monitoring of all sorts of pressures and the body parameters you know being displayed on the monitor for the doctors to decide. That is the reason why I have introduced this term over here, the pore water pressure measurement. Computationally I can obtain like this. So, this philosophy now I am going to extend to the shear strength theory. Is this part clear? If I say E versus sigma prime has given me pre consortium pressure, if I write a situation sigma c is greater than or let us say sigma 3 is greater than sigma c prime, what is going to happen? Meaning thereby, I have crossed this limit of stressing the sample, I am working in a higher stress range. If you complete this curve, what is going to happen? This is how it is going to traverse and it will cut at this point and this point becomes the pre consolidation pressure and this system behaves as if nothing has happened to it, so this becomes NC material. So, remember as long as the confining stresses are more than the pre consolidation pressures, the pore water pressures are always going to be positive, got it? It is like balloon. So, balloon is filled with water or air and if I keep on pressing it, what is going to happen? The more and more pressure is going to build up which is going to be positive in nature. So, that means under these circumstances, the pore water pressures are going to be positive. However, the reverse is going to be true when I am working in a stress range which is going to be less than sigma 3 prime. So, if I reverse this, this is going to be negative pore water pressure. Is this concept concept clear? So, if this concept is clear to you, I will extend this to shear strength envelopes. So, if I plot now tau versus sigma prime. Now, if I project this information on a tau sigma prime plane, what is going to happen is, I am going to get something of this type. And I hope you can easily guess that this point of discontinuity is going to be sigma c prime. The soils are so intelligent, you know they behave in this manner. Now, if I extend this portion, what you will find it that this is your friction angle and hence I can say that anything which is beyond sigma c prime in terms of sigma stresses, this is going to be NC response and less than this is going to be OC response. In real life, what we do is, if you do perform a test at very, very small confining stresses of let us say 25 kPa, 50 kPa, you are going to get this type of hump. What we do is, we average it out and we plot it like this. So, this is the term which we ascribe to C for OC material, average value of A to B. So, this is the average of AB and at this point we have pre consolidation pressure and then this continues as the NC material. What is the practical applicability of this situation? If I rotate this curve by 90 degree, what is going to happen? This becomes your undrained shear strength SU. 
which is equal to 2 times Cu because what is Cu? Cu will be equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2, correct? The SU term is sigma 1 minus sigma 3, this is undrained shear strength, this is undrained cohesion. Sigma prime term is a function of Z, Z is the depth of the deposit. The curve remains same because tau is nothing but SU, sigma prime is nothing but a function of Z and this is what I am talking about the natural deposits, what is happening there. So, if you look at the natural deposits, what you will observe is that shear strength most of the times in marine environment particularly where you are doing most of the projects of national importance, international importance, this is how the stress shear strength decreases and then it picks up and it goes linear and this is how we can extrapolate this, alright. This is the zone in which what we call is as a tricky zone, this is approximately 1 meter, 1 to 1.5 meter and this is what is known as desiccation zone. Most of the time in the marine environment, particularly in the coastal areas because of the very high humidity, very high temperatures, the top layer of the soil gets desiccated like cake. When you bake a cake, what happens? The top layer and the bottom layer are stiff and inside you have quite soft material, clear? So, something like this happening. Now, imagine if by virtue of your mistake and less, less understanding of the material, if you create an embankment on the top of this, what is going to happen? The strengths are going to be less over here and the embankments are going to collapse. So, that is the reason why OC behavior cannot be ignored and by investigations normally we fix the desiccation zone thickness. Here again we can apply this as a normalization and we can say that this is the average value. We can assume SU variation in the desiccation zone to be constant followed by a linear increase in the shear strength of materials. So, one part which I have not discussed yet about the uh, CU test is how to identify the material based on AF parameter. So, if I do continuous monitoring of the pore water pressures, alright, and if I say that this is the A parameter at failure, what I can do is I can plot AF versus percentage epsilon A. And the way cardiologists see the cardiogram of a, of a patient, I can tell you how the material is behaving and how should I use this material for construction. So, until now you have understood that AF is going to be positive for NC materials, is this correct? Because the pore water pressures are going to be positive. So, if I plot AF as a function of the strain and this is how I get it, it is a typical NC response. However, in case of OC materials, what is going to happen? <coughs> there would be a response like this. There will be a slight positive pore pressure followed by rest of it would be a negative pore pressure. So, just by looking, by doing an online test where I am instrumenting everything, I can plot these type of graphs and I know how the soil sample is behaving. And ultimately what we are going to do is we are going to use these parameters to classify the soils. The last in the series is the UU test. Later on what we will do is we will link this AF with OCR over consolidation ratio and we will define this OCR as uh, the sigma C prime over cell pressure. So, I hope now you can realize sigma C prime is the pore, uh, this thing pre consolidation pressure, 
divided by the sigma 3 which you are applying to the sample and then we will correlate this effects again and we will characterize the soil whether it is a OC response or NC response. Now let me come back to UU test, the third one. Now as I said, this is another category of the response which we are try, try, trying to capture. Unconsolidated, undrained, typically offshore environments unconsolidated undrained soil samples are saturated there is no way they can get consolidated young materials they are all being deposited by the rivers into the ocean bed they will take millions of years to get consolidated clear because of sulfate no drainage condition all marine clay peculiar example of offshore construction piling everywhere in the world so no consolidation no drainage, fine. So what you are going to get is something known as total stress parameter, undrained, total stress. We talked about effective, we talked about CD and now we are talking about the total stress analysis, clear. So this is what is going to be UU test, normally we define the parameter which we get as phi u undrained, C u as undrained and we make sure that this is equal to 0. Remember another request is phi is never computed in decimal places 23.2, no, phi in geomechanics is always a absolute number, it cannot be 23.23, it cannot be 23.1 even because the degree of accuracy is not so much. So this is the condition which we are creating where we are not allowing any friction to get mobilized even if it is coming out to be 2 to 3 degrees. We always assume this to be 0. The reason is simple. Unconsolidated test, water pressures are building up. Is this fine? I can measure it also by doing a UU prime test and then what I am doing is I am sharing the sample under undrained conditions to get the response of the material. Typical UU response would be Any guess when phi is 0, what is going to happen? It is a horizontal line, clear. So, all your Mohr cycles are going to be perfectly sitting like this. And I can give a reasonably average value as phi u equal to 0, and this becomes my Mohr Coulomb envelope. Okay. In effective form, if I have to write, what is going to happen? All these more circles are going to get overlapped on one. So this is how the effective more circle will look like. By subtracting the power pressure, you will be having a unique circle. What should I do then? Should I allow phi or C or what NC material? C is going to be 0 and only 5 will get mobilized. So this is your effective stress envelope. Have you understood this? I can measure the power pressures and I can compute the or I can compute the power pressures and I can apply this correction from sigma 1, sigma 3 to get the effective stress envelope. It is very important that the type of testing which we are doing and how we are going to interpret the results. One more thing which I will just take another one minute. Once I have got the total stress and effective stress, I would like to see what is going to happen if I test the sample in the UCS, unconfined shear strength of the material. So a UCS will always show you the negative power pressure. always negative power pressure because there is no confinement. So what we have done by creating situations of loading and drainage, we have characterized the soil in the best possible engineering way.
So the last remark would be, as a designer, you will be confused. What I should be doing? I have CD, I have CU, I have UU, I have UC as what I am supposed to do. Plot all of them on a same scale. Clear? And in general, you will be getting the CU like this, UU like this, CU like this, UU like this. So, this is the re relative, you know, strength parameters which we will be getting from here. So, CU gives the upper bound, UU gives the lower bound, CU is in between. If I can perform tests, CU or UU, I can extrapolate, interpolate in such a manner that I may be getting the range of parameters in which I am working. It might be possible because normally a CD test would take you at least a month to conduct on clays continuously because you are consolidating the sample, it will take you two weeks and when you are sharing at very, very slow test, slow rate, it is going to take you another two, two weeks. You might not be having so much time in the real life practice. So, CD test unless somebody specifies is not done. And the quick test would be which I can do from the body of the ship is UU. I will load down a plunger, a vein, I will do the test, I will get the UU parameters or I will retrieve the samples, bring them to the laboratory, conduct the test, superimpose this condition, gets C parameters.